Joseph lived with his family before they were engaged to each other. Do you know how far Nazareth is from Bethlehem? Everybody? 90 miles. According to Google, it's 90 miles. Okay, So it probably took them about a week to walk there. Because they had to walk. And, and Okay, we'll talk about that. All right, I'm going to read this to you. Okay. At that time, Augustus Caesar, Caesar was sent in order for all people in the country that were under the Roman rule. They were forward. The order said that they must list their names in the register. Do you know what that is? Like the register, like It's called a census. It's like if your parents have ever gotten one of those in the mail, they want the United States to take in a population count. That's what was happening to, to Bethlehem, and they had to go to Bethlehem to register because that's the town they, their family originated from. So this is in Luke chapter 2, verse 4. So Joseph left Nazareth, the town in Galilee. He went to the town of Bethlehem in Judea. This town was known as the town of David. Joseph went there because he was from the family of David. Joseph registered with Mary because she was engaged to marry him. They weren't married yet. Mary was now pregnant. While Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. We all know what baby that was, right? Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus, that's right. So she gave birth to her first son. There was no rooms left in the inn. Do you know what an inn is? A hotel. A hotel, that's right. So she so. She could not go to a hotel with a nice, warm hotel room with her new baby. So she wrapped the baby with cloths and laid him in a box where the animals are fed. What is that? A manger. What did you say, Charlotte? A manger. A manger. This is where the animals eat their hay out of. That's where the savior of the world was born. This, this is the really cool part to me, okay? And I like to add in the detail when I'm reading this to you. This is the really cool part of this. I think of myself as being a shepherd, an ordinary person doing their job, okay? That night, some shepherds were in the fields nearby watching their sheep. An angel of the Lord, this always shuts me up, stood before them. And the glory of the Lord was shining around them. And suddenly they became very afraid. So angels, historically, if you have read in the Bible, if your parents have, Angels kind of glow, guys. You know why? Because what is great? No, they they are in the presence of God Almighty in heaven. So when they come to earth, they bring His majesty, His glory with them, and they shine to regular people. There's like a glow about them. And the shepherds saw them, and they were scared because. There was no angel there, and then all of a sudden, there was an angel there in front of us, glowing. So they knew that angel was not a regular person. The angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord was shining around them. They were very afraid. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, because I'm bringing you some good news. It will be a joy to all people. Today, your Savior was born in David's town. That's Bethlehem. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a feeding box for a manger. Then, all of a sudden, instead of one angel being there, a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel. And all the angels were praising God, saying, Give glory to God in heaven and on earth. Let there be peace to the people who please God. And then all of a sudden, like boom, the angels left, and the shepherds were standing there. The angels went back to heaven. The shepherds said, oh my gosh. Probably not those exact words, but they were a little freaked out, right? Wouldn't you be freaked out if that came to for you? No. But they said, we have got to, let us go to Bethlehem. They're way out in the field. They're not close to Bethlehem. They're watching their sheep doing their job. They said, let us go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened. We will see this thing the Lord told us about. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph. And the shepherds saw the baby lying in the manger. Then 
And they told what the angel had said about this child. Everyone was amazed when they heard what the shepherd said to them. When Mary, Jesus' mother, did all these things in her heart and continued to think about them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God and thanking him for everything that they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. And when the baby was eight days old, this is a Jewish custom, they gave him the name Jesus. This name had been given by the angel before the baby began to grow inside of Mary. So, what I want you to remember about this. Are you a king or a queen's son? No. Are you a president's son? No, technically we're Jesus. You're right. But that's what God has given to us by sending Jesus to earth, right? Are we kind of ordinary people? Yeah. Everyday people? We go to work. We go to the grocery store. We don't go to school every day. We come to church. We have friends. We have family. But guess who was the first people to hear that the Messiah, our Savior, had been born? Who was that? No, it was not Mary and Joseph. Everyday, ordinary people doing their job, right? The shepherds out in the fields watching their clock, okay? They didn't know it was going to be a special day, did they? No. No, they were just doing their job. They showed us doing their job. And God our Father sent the angel to tell the ordinary people that they have a Messiah now and that they are special and that Jesus is going to be the Savior of our world. Isn't that pretty awesome? Yeah. Is that the best gift you could ever get? Yeah. I mean, it is really because now you'll never die. Did you know that? Your body may die. But if you love Jesus, that's right. And we'll be in heaven with God. And then we'll be actually see all the angels. Okay? Uh, does anybody have any questions? No? Yeah. All right, guys. All right. Let's hear it one more time from Miss Tammy. Thank you so much. So, uh, I'm going to open up our focus text. We didn't pass the Bible. We had a lot going on. But this is a verse that you should all know. And I'm going to have it up here on the screen. But I'm going to ask one of my dear friends, Ms. Kylie Skipper, to come up here and see if she can recite it out loud. Our verse of the day. <laughs> Kylie, what book and what verse are we about to quote? John 3.16. John 3.16. Will you say real loud for everyone what John 3.16 says? For God so loved the world that he gave one and all his life. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. God, we all, guys, we all know the, the true meaning of Christmas is, a, is of course, the birth of Baby. Jesus. And Jesus is the greatest gift this world's ever been gifted. That's why today's lesson uh, I'm calling, This Gift is for You. Okay? Now, last week, or not last week, last week we had a party. Two weeks ago, I gave you guys one of the longest lessons and one of the most complicated lessons we have ever taught here. And I, I'm talk, I can't tell you how much I brag about you guys, other pastor friends of mine, who were like, that might be a little too over their head. They might not get it. And I went back and I watched that video and I could hear you guys, stuff I don't hear up here while I'm preaching. I heard you guys on the playback of that video being like, oh, wow, you're blowing my mind. You're making, someone even goes, you're making me question reality right now. I don't know who said that, but it was hilarious. But I can tell you guys got it, and I've bragged about you guys for the past 14 days. So that the, 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 the point I'm getting at the good news right now is that while two weeks ago we had a very long and complicated lesson, today I, I have for you a very short and simple lesson. I have two points I want to point out to you guys. So let's move into it. Everybody say number one. Number one. Point number one. So we all know Christmas is a time where we get to focus on and celebrate the greatest gift this world has ever received from God the Father, and that, of course, is David Jesus. David Jesus. The birth of Jesus. But we also are usually this time of year pretty aware of another famous man who, during Christmas, also gives gifts, and that man's name is Santa. Santa. St. Nicholas. You're absolutely right. Now, uh, I once heard a pastor 
give a sermon about how Santa Claus is supposed to be a, a metaphor or a reminder about the true meaning of this time of year, the true meaning of this season, which of course is Jesus. So he's supposed to be a reminder of the true gift of Christmas, which is Jesus. Um, now this pastor made some really good points. Hold on, KK. This pastor made some really good points, but I think there's some really major differences that are worth pointing out, and that's what I want to do right now. So let's look at it. So in the legend of Santa, it says that he sees you when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're awake, and he knows if you've been bad or good, so you'll so be good for goodness sake. Uh, so, okay, we're, we're kind of off to a good start. That, that kind of sounds comparable to God, uh, kind of, I, I, I guess. I mean, uh, we're always in God's sight. He always sees us. Uh, Psalm says that he knows when we rest, and he knows when we rise. He also knows every thought we have and all of our, our words on our tongue before we even speak them. And, of course, we all know that God knows when we sin against him and when we honor him. So he sees us when, he's, when we're sleeping. He knows when we're awake. He knows if we've been bad or good. So that, that's pretty comparable so far, right? Pretty comparable. But this is where the difference starts. You see, with Santa, he makes a list, and then he checks it twice. And he makes a list of who's been naughty and who's been nice. Now, if you're good, you make the and if you're bad, you make the naughty list. You're absolutely right. Uh, and if you make the nice list, you get a you get a present. You get a gift. All right. So we got that. But here's the thing. That's not how it works with God. This is where the big difference happens. You see, in Romans, it says that we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. Meaning God has a standard of perfection, and not one of us can meet that standard. Therefore, because of sin, we all fall short of his standard. And because of this, Romans also says that no one is righteous, not even one. There is not one person alive who is right standing in God's eyes. So that would mean, uh, uh, unlike Santa, with God, that would automatically put all of us on the naughty list, right? That's kind of a bummer, right? That's a bummer. But here's where the big difference happens. With God, we don't have to do good to get on the nice list to get a gift. Because there's not enough good in this world that we can do to make up for the fact that we don't need his standard of perfection. Good is cool, but his standard is perfect, and not one of us can reach that. Because we can't do enough good, because we all fall short as we read, and we all sin. Instead, because of sin, we are all on God's naughty list like we just talked about. But the book of Romans says that while we were still yet sinners, God sent us a gift. And that wasn't just any gift. It was the greatest gift ever given. It was the gift of salvation, the gift of grace, the gift of forgiveness, eternal life, and most importantly, the gift of adoption into the kingdom of heaven. In short... That gift was Jesus. Even though we were on the naughty list, he said it's the greatest gift he could possibly give, which was the gift of Jesus. Again, Romans tells us only by receiving that gift and accepting that gift do we become right in his eyes, and thus we are freed from the penalty of sin through Christ Jesus. When we receive that gift, we become covered in forgiveness that Jesus died to give us, thus moving us from God's naughty list to God's nice list. You guys see what I'm trying to draw here? Santa says, be good, make the nice list, and get a gift. God says, you're already on the naughty list, but I'm giving you a gift anyways, and if you accept this gift, I will move you from the naughty list to the nice list. Do y'all see that difference? That's a big difference, right? Thus, accepting God's gift doesn't just move us from a naughty to a nice list, but actually writes our name in heaven in the book of life, which when we show up at the gates of heaven someday, they will look and say, yep, your name's on the guest list, come on in. That is what happens when we accept that gift. That is called grace. Because salvation is a gift given to us. We could not earn it. It was earned by Jesus and simply gifted to us. 
Okay, so we covered point one, that God gave us a gift even though we were on his naughty list. And by receiving it, it moved us on the nice list, which is totally different from the, from the legend of Santa. So everybody got it? If you say, got it, got it. Got it. If you don't got it, say, repeat that. Don't repeat that. I don't have time. We're, we're running out of time. So we're moving on to point two. Everybody say point two. All right. So we've covered the most important gift and the difference between Santa gifts and, and, and God gift uh, of Jesus. So let's talk about gifts for a second. When you give someone a gift, there's always a little tag. Sometimes it's a sticker. Sometimes it's hanging on by a string. But on that tag is always the name of the person that that gift is. That gift is four. You're absolutely right. So it has a name tag on it, and it tells you who that gift is for. For instance, uh, I, I'm married now, so sometimes I get a gift, and it says to Johnny. But sometimes if it's for me and my wife, it'll say to Johnny and Lori. Or sometimes if it's if we have kids and it's for all of us, like earlier I gave the Moors a present, and it was for their whole family, so it said to the Moore family. So it was to all of them. Now, when we look at that, if we look at the gift of Jesus, uh, based off our opening verse of John 3, 16, which says, for God so loved the world. world. So at first glance, if you look at the name tag on the greatest gift ever given, it might look like it was generically given to an entire group of people, everyone in the world at the time, everyone in the world in the future, and everyone in the world in the past. So it was just generically given to the world. And while that is true, because John 3.16 does, uh, does say, For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. But this is what I want you guys to remember. This is my, the most important part of today's lesson. That if you take a closer inspection of the name tag on the greatest gift ever given, that gift was, Tammy's not going to be the only one to cry today. I, I didn't get through this last time. It's going to happen today. If you take a really close inspection of the name tag on the greatest gift ever given, it was individually and specifically addressed to you. And the reason for that is because God specifically and individually had you on his mind when he sent Jesus. And later on, Jesus specifically and individually had you on his mind when he went on the cross. It would be like if, if next week I took you guys all out for pizza after church. And we all jumped in our little van out there and we drove to CC's Pizza. And you guys are all lined up like, man, I'm going to eat some pizza today. I'm going to get some cinnamon rolls when I'm done. I'm going to drink more Coca-Cola than I could possibly even imagine. This is going to be a day. And when they said, how many uh, is this just for you? And I said, no, I'm going to get all of their lunch. I'm going to pay for all of their lunch. Now, on the surface, I'm buying my entire class lunch. But that also means, make no mistake, I am buying Braylon lunch because I love him and I want to take him out for lunch. I am buying Jalen lunch. I'm saying, David, let me get your lunch. I'm saying, hey, man, I'm buying your lunch today. So it is for a group, but I'm also individually and specifically buying your lunch as well. Because when I walk up to the front and I hand them my card, yes, I'm saying all of them are with me, but I'm also saying Emma is with me, and Georgia is with me, and Kylie is with me, and, and Eduardo, I'm paying for him, and Jonathan, I'm paying for him too, and, and Ben, he's with me. Guys, in the exact same way, while Jesus was a gift for the entire world, make no mistake, when he went on that cross, he said, Sophia, I'm paying for her. And he said, Sarah, I'm paying for her. And he said, Ace, let me pay for him. He did it for each and every single one of you, personally and individually. Because that's what he was sent for, was personally and individually for you. I already said that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I knew my notes, so I got ahead. And the, the reason for this, I don't want you guys to ever forget it's because God personally loves you so much that he sent his son for you, individually and specifically for you. And Jesus loves you so much that he died for you. God sent a gift of salvation that, in the gift of Jesus and said, this gift is for you. 
So guys, that, that's just what I want you guys to take away from this, that this isn't a shared gift. While everybody has access to it, this is something very personal and very uh, individual to you. So I just wanted, that's what I want you all to take away today, that this gift is for you. So real quick, uh, we'll, we're going to break into a real quick small group. Our two questions that will go with the boys over here and the girls over here. Question number one, why did God send Jesus? And question number two, who did God send Jesus for? I love you guys. Let's break into our small groups. Ladies, boys, boom. Thank you all.